Do you want to come in and see inside the trailer? What is it like to teach from a traveling classroom in a trailer? Let's go have a look. Here's the door. Let's go inside. Here we are. Oh, look. Step ladder. Skateboard. Mm, I see balloons. Oh, what's this curtain? Let's go see what's behind it. Here we go. <laughs> It's a classroom. You would never know. <laughs> so, welcome to my classroom. This is what it looks like for a student. They see about this far, so they don't see this. <laughs> we share a little office space, my husband and I, so we decided to put like a little screen, a bit of privacy to keep it enclosed and quiet. I wanted to show you some of the things that I have found helpful teaching in a small space and in an RV. But first, let's look up here. This is a door. <laughs> let's open it and see. I keep my props right here. This is it. This is all I keep. Keep a makeup bag. Oh, I keep two boxes of props right here. One, two. The boxes themselves are even props. One of these for celebrations <gasps> and I keep my headphones here let's get those out and I keep a few things here just in case I need them but these aren't regular things I have an extra phone to demonstrate circling on a screen a book to talk about the title the title of a book have some family pictures here because we talk about family and I do have a pencil case for when I was doing the classroom section with uh, pencils and markers and I keep a ruler right here and I do have an extra globe here but I don't use that one very often anymore because, because I found this little guy <laughs> do you need to spend a lot of money to set up your online classroom no you don't a lot of my props are either from when my son was little or from the Dollar Tree. Mm, this one was from Walmart. A little mini globe. So cute. Because I was traveling a lot, uh, my bigger globe that I had up there, it just was too big to take traveling. And I love to show the children where I'm going if I'm traveling. So this one actually comes apart. So sometimes I take that with me if I'm traveling and I just want a small amount of props. And uh, it also doubles as a ball and it's blue and it has colors. So it's really good for geography, colors, a ball, many things. So let's put that one back there. I always leave Australia in view. Tigger <laughs> was my son's, so we've had him for a long time. I have a logo here. I have a logo here. This one and this one were both uh, a gift from another teacher at a teacher meetup. So what do I have in my classroom? I'll give you a little look around. Here is my little setup. I have a teaching stand. So I'm not using my laptop for teaching. That's for other things. But uh, I have two ring lights. I used to use my phone for teaching and they were the clip-on uh, holder for the phone and the light, but they've both since broken. And I'm now using my iPad, so I do use this. I've just propped this up today because I'm doing this video. I do use this box though, like this. This is where I teach. I put my iPad here. My iPad's charging right now. Put my iPad here and I start teaching from there and I just keep everything here. So let's have a look at some of the things that I keep in my classroom that I found really helpful. Now you don't need headphones, but I find these are really good. These are cyber acoustics. So this is the boom mic. You can have it either on this side or you can flip it around to this side. Remembering because you're teaching from a device, you don't want a USB connector, but you'll need this 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable that would plug into your phone or tablet. So not necessary, but I found that really helpful because for me, it blocks out any noise around me. Then I have my personal items in here so sometimes if I look a little bit shiny I'll put a little powder on my nose I like lipstick so the students can see pronunciation better when you have bright lips and I have a hairbrush 
which sometimes comes in really handy actually when we're teaching about personal items such as brush your hair and brush your teeth and sometimes we teach comb your hair but I don't keep combing hair okay so that is something that I find really helpful just to have a little makeup bag ready to go if I need it keep a box of tissues uh, in case you sneeze uh, I always keep uh, a cup of water this is just a clear cup in case I ever want to use water as a teaching thing this was just a McDonald's cup but I like this because if I do have to have a drink in the middle of class using a straw and a cup is less intrusive in the class but I do keep a bottle of water that I use to drink during classes so I keep two boxes of props I don't always travel with them uh, this was my first box that I got when I first started teaching ESL about two years ago I love this one because the lid actually has a star on it the first company I started with did not have any in-system rewards so I used to say you're a star <laughs> so in the box this is also great for teaching prepositions such as I'll get Tigger and we'll teach on the box under the box next to the box take the lid off and in the box so that's always helpful the box itself comes in helpful and behind what is behind the teacher so Tigger comes in really handy there uh, also my name, I made these in a Powerfish Live stream class where I actually cut out the letters and I asked the students to help me choose which colour for each letter. That was really cool. So some of the things that I find really helpful is this came with a whiteboard. It's actually a um, whiteboard thing but it's a B. So that is helpful. I've had this fish for a really long time because I worked for Powerfish and before that I worked for Boxfish. So that fish was really helpful again this one's from Dollar Tree it was a pack of three I think from Dollar Tree of ducks so they're helpful um, my son happened to have a uh, Wally and one of my students loves the character Wally and he has an Eva as well and this also helps to teach robot I don't use this very often but a train and a penguin and it's really fun because it pops up oh <gasps> How many penguins do you see? So that's really helpful too. Sometimes we teach pig. I have a pepper pig who also is a singer. So microphone. And that's helpful when I'm teaching the farm animals. I have a horse, a rabbit, a sheep. Before I bought pepper pig, <laughs> I used to use this one which is actually an eraser. Erasers are really good props. So this is the one I take. If I'm going traveling and I'm minimizing what I'm gonna take with me, I just take one car because I want to tell them that I've gone traveling. This can teach wheel, circle, green. <laughs> so that's really helpful. Sometimes when you eat out, the kids will get a, a crayon pack at the restaurant, or this was at our local grocery store. So there you go four crayons for free and they're great for teaching the primary colors which is really helpful and teaching the classroom words crayon uh, getting back to the farm animals I also have a cow that was given to me it is a magnet so that comes in really handy for teaching the cow and I like this one because it's not black and white it's brown and white so it helps to teach the color brown I do have this was also from Dollar Tree my panda helps me to teach black and white and some of the kids love Lego so here I have a couple of Lego men I like this one because it has the helmet and this one has a hat so I keep these guys and sometimes I'll ask did you make this with Lego also I have a monkey and a koala because I'm from Australia and the monkey is your trial class that you will use the same class for your demo that's actually the class the class is one of the trial classes that you'll be teaching when you start with Powerfish you don't have to go out and buy a lot of stuff sometimes I'll see something and think it will be amazing for class and then I 
never use them. So these were, again, Dollar Tree. I guess that's set up pretty much most of my classroom. But I really don't use them. I probably use my flashcards more than my props. These are my favourite flashcards. I only keep the ones that I use the most. I don't keep all of them at my desk. So sometimes I'll be teaching the food section, ice cream, pizza, cake. Also doubles his birthday because we talk about celebrations. Banana, apple, orange, fish. So these are the four that you'll need for your demo lesson, plus the one of the popular trial classes that you'll be teaching. So fish, cat, dog, and monkey. Flashcards are fine. You don't need to have a lot in your classroom to start with. You can build up later on. So whether you want to have flashcards or you already have some toys from your kids, those are helpful too. If I was to invest when I was starting, I just tell people if you could just get one pack of flashcards or if you like to draw, just draw them. That is cool too. Also, I did end up getting some extra ones for the shapes. So this was consisting of, mm, I think there's three flashcards here. So on the back, these are my favorite flashcards, Play School. The reason I like Play School is because it's very simple. It's less distracting. Picture, word. There's no characters on there to be distracting. Colors and shapes. The first words pack. So the alphabet. So if you wanted to get one pack of flashcards, these are my favorite for your first pack. First words, excellent. That'll have everything you need for your trial class and your mock class. And then if you wanted to get the next one would be colors and shapes because you'll be teaching colors and shapes in one of the units and then if you wanted a third one the alphabet actually has a lot of these food items so that one has p for pizza but even in the first words pack there's a lot of food items this was the cake in the first word my second little box that i keep which also is great for teaching gift present red box and giving them a present to you with a present so i keep uh, i have another pack of crayons here but I just keep little things in here. This is actually my food box. I keep this one separate as my food box. You might end up getting a few more props and you want to organize them where you know what's in each box or you know what is where. So this is my food box and sometimes I pretend it's a lunch box. I keep two lollipops because that teaches the word L and they use the word L they use the word lollipop to teach the letter L and I like to keep two because then they say one for you and one for me. Or if there's a parent there, one for you and one for mum, a sandwich. But I like to keep two sandwich sandwiches because we teach that in the lesson. Do you like ice cream? Yes, I do. So I have vanilla and chocolate which also teaches white and brown. These are all erasers. This was in a pack from Target. I think it was $5. Fries, hamburger, and hot dog. This is in the food section in level one. So I love these. They are really helpful. The benefits of teaching in a small space in an RV is the kitchen is right there. So if I do need something right before class, I can dash out and get it. Sometimes I will actually ask the parents' permission. Can I show Jimmy the kitchen? So they think that's really cool. So this morning I was showing some fruit, apple, orange, banana, and then I like to make it really funny and I'll say, banana, oh, it's a phone. Hello? Hello, Jimmy? <laughs> And then to make it extra fun, sometimes we teach lemonade in the food section. So I will bring a lemon to class if I have one. And when I talk about these fruits, I say, oh, a lemon, do you eat a lemon? And it's really fun, it makes them laugh. So if you have real things to bring to class, that's always fun too. <laughs> oh, I keep some flashcards, the ones that I use the most, um, tree, flower, this talks about, helps me to teach smell, uh, purple, flower, grow, the tree. We talk about things that grow and also when we talk about the fruit. 
section so that is helpful too and I just stick those up there with my trusty blue tack blue tack which I brought with me from Australia I'm traveling right now and this does not leave a mark on the wall so a lot of my things are stuck on the wall with blue tack but also if you have magnets some props and rewards that you buy will have a magnet already on them or you can actually buy magnets so I actually made up some of my own rewards by these are actually stickers foam stickers but I left the sticker on the back and I stuck my own magnet on the magnet strips you can buy from Walmart they're adhesive so you just cut the size that you want stick it on and I made my own reward systems you get a star when you're doing your palfish uh, mock class the reward system doesn't work in the class when you're doing your demo because you're the only person there there's no student but when a student is live the star system works so what I did for my interview is I just had one of these and when I was rewarding <laughs> rewarding in the demo I would just say so in the class, when it's live, it actually pops up on the screen as an animation and it's really cool. The kids love it. So I hope that's been helpful. I just have a chair that I sit on. I keep my shirt hanging here so I'm ready to go. The students don't see my hole here with my curtain. Um, a magnetic whiteboard is helpful. So if you do have a whiteboard and markers, they're helpful also when I didn't have the on-screen functions I would actually keep a whiteboard for each student and do my feedback at the end and those ended up being my notes that I would use to give my feedback to the students when I was doing those classes it was actually video feedback to the students so that came in really handy and I could show them the words that we were working on I googled what is the best color to wear for an interview did you know it's blue which I love about Palfish wearing blue. So now I have many blue shirts. I do have a few logo shirts as well. And blue has just become a part of my daily life. Who is this? So a recent addition in our household is Mr. Potato Head. I haven't yet used him in class, but I've heard he is a great favorite for students as well. So that gives you some ideas of things that you can have in your classroom as either a reward system or to help you teach. I'm getting quite used to the lessons now. I don't need to take as many notes. Sometimes if I do need to write something down, I just write on a sticky note and I throw it out after class. So I don't keep a ton of things because I'm used to the lessons now and I don't find that I need to take a ton of notes. So in the beginning, you might find that you need to do a lot of preparation, but once you get to know the flow and you've taught those classes, to more than one student they become second nature and you find it a lot easier to even just remember what the students need to work on. So I hope this has been helpful. What do you teach in? Some of my friends teach in a small space in their home such as their closet. If you found this video helpful give it a like and share it with a friend. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for spending time with me today. See you in the next one.